two talks about the SDN controller aspect of this. Um, the other change I wanted to um, highlight around network engineering and especially this, the effect of warehouse scale um, networks on campus network engineering is uh, the hardware itself. Um, so I'm happy to um, invite Andrew Ruthven. Uh, Andrew's a data centre manager at Catalyst IT in New Zealand, so again, I'd like to thank him for coming so far for today. Um, he's been working with the equipment from the Open Compute Project uh, in his data centre. Um, he's going to share his experience of what that's been like, so thank you. Um, it's all yours. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, and I'd just like to say that I'm, about 15 years ago, I started to describe myself as a network engineer who can code. So. We've certainly been talking about that kind of stuff for quite a while. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through a little bit of, of uh, history about the Open Compute Project, tell you what it is, and then talk about the networking side of things. Um, so hopefully we can go through this quite quickly. Um, what is the Open Compute Project? Uh, it's basically rethinking computing. Stepping back, reassessing, and rethinking how we're doing this kind of stuff. Uh, it's all about vanity-free computing. Uh, why do we need to have fancy panels on the front of our servers and <coughs> name tags and all that kind of stuff? They, they take up space, they restrict airflow, they just heap more weight that you don't need. So let's strip down computing. Let's get rid of that stuff. Let's think about what components are in a server that, that we actually need. Do we need a graphics card? How often do you actually go, go up with a crash cart and plug into a server? We do remote management. You know, we, we SH in the, the BMC and do stuff with that. Um, the only time you might use GPUs is if you're actually using them for compute, and then you want to have fancy GPUs. So, you know, stop, think about that. So let's cut out all the stuff you don't need. PS2 ports, really? Uh, resize computing. Why do we use a 19 inch rack for our servers? Anyone here know why we use them? No, um, so they were developed for hold, holding railway relay racks in about the 1880s. Uh, AT&T started putting out uh, toll cables in the early 1900s. They adopted this 19 inch rack in about 1922. We've been using them ever since. They're not suitable for servers. The you know, the thing you want to put into a, a, into a server is usually hard drives. Let's go a bit wider. So what the uh, Open Compute Project said was let's move those 19 inch pillars 21 inches. Now you can fit another hard drive in. Outside dimensions are the same, still 600 mil wide. They are tall. <coughs> Likewise, why do we use one RU uh, servers? You have to put tiny little fans in them. Real, real pain. So, Let's think about doing efficient computing. Uh, this is around maintenance. You know, we get these servers and all this other equipment that have got these little tiny screws holding the cases on. How many people have lost those through the air vents and the raised floors? <laughs> I have. Then you've got the pill up. Ah, it's, it's a pain. So to be certified as open compute, you have to have toolless servers. No tools required to do any maintenance on them. Quite nice. Uh, so they're designed with ease of maintenance in mind. You know, some of the servers that, that we get, the uh, you know the, the little uh, CMOS battery, the watch battery that's in the server, you got to take things out to get them out. These have them exposed on the side of the case, so you can just easily pop it out and put a new one in. Fantastic. Um, all ports are on the cold side of the server, so there's no more working in the hot aisle. On the on the hot side, you only ever work in the cold aisle. Much nicer, much, much nicer. Uh, this also uh, allows more efficiency around putting stuff into containers, uh, you know, shipping containers, things like that. Uh, airflow, so as I said, one use servers, you need to have little, a billion little fans that it sounds like a jet engine taking off when you turn them on. Um, if you go a little bit taller, you can use 80 mil fans, that requires about a quarter of the power to actually cool the server. So you're doing a lot more efficiency, you need less fans. Again, less weight. Uh, by using 21 inch racks, you get rid of the gaps between the pillars and the outside of the, the rack cabinet, so you're not losing air around the side of your servers anymore either. So 
more, a lot more efficiency. Think about electricity. Um, every server has two redundant power supplies in them because, you know, they pop. That's a bit of a waste. Servers take DC power at various voltages. Let's just run a DC bu um, bus bar at the back of the rack, have a couple, one or two power shelves for a rack, and just run all of our, all our servers off 12 volts or 48 volts. Much more sensible. Uh, you can put a you know, different number of power shelves in based on your power demands. Um, you can three, feed three-phase power into the power shelves. You can do 48 volt. Uh, Google has contributed a design that does 48 volt power shelves. Uh, we don't get quite the same efficiencies in Australia and New Zealand as they do in America, where they have 110 volts, but we still get, it still gives us benefits. Uh, management's a big important thing. There's a new, um, how many people use I IPMI, the managed use servers? Um, they're all different, right? Every vendor has variations on it. Uh, so a new standard's come out called Redfish, which is the RESTful API, standardised. Fantastic. Um, where did it come from? This is the uh, Facebook data centre in Prineville, Oregon, which they built in 2011. When they came to, to build this, they decided to redesign everything from the ground up. They did redesigned the power reticulation, the cooling systems, and the servers, and the switches. This is uh, Amir Michael. Uh, he was a hardware de design manager at Facebook. This is the first OCP server that will be publicly shown off. Um, so OCP came out of Facebook. Um, this is a stripped down motherboard. It's kind of hard to see, but there's almost no I.O. ports on the front of this thing. All the ports are on the front. Still has its own power supply, um, but it's a bit taller. It's got four 60 mil fans. So and another important thing is that this, right from this one here, it was tallest. So, Facebook have gone on record saying that um, typically they, they used, before using OCP, they had one technician to about 200 physical servers. Now they have one tech to 25,000 physical servers. So it's also more efficient maintenance. Where did it go to? The Open Compute Project. They released this as open source. They started the foundation alongside Rackspace and Intel, and this was in 2011. And since that stage, it's now got this many members. This is from the start of the year. There's more now. Um, at that point, there was 190 companies. Uh, approximately 32% of those are from Asia Pacific. Most of those are from the northern areas of Asia Pacific. Very few from here. Uh, recent additions of interest to me are Catalyst, that we've joined. Uh, Rittle, are doing racks with them now. Um, Alibaba is now a member. So you know, we've seen some very, very large players. Uh, interestingly enough, more than 50% of the servers produced are now open compute project servers. And they're going to the hyperscalers, mostly. Uh, this is a bit twitchy. So what is it? There's a bunch of projects within it. Um, each project has got, uh, no, there's nine projects. There's about over 4,000 engineers working on these worldwide. Each project has got a technical lead. There are subgroups working in particular areas. Um, and when the, the uh, specifications get approved, they go up on the website. It's been really useful to go and get the actual engineering specifications of the servers to work out what the hell is a pinout on this, on this port. It's in the spec. Very useful. Very, very useful. There's a foundation board. Um, there's, it's made up of industry leaders. Uh, there's seven members of it, and it, they're not paid positions. They're end user focused. Just because you're a top level member of the foundation does not guarantee your seat, which is uh, very good. And the board chairman rotates between the board members. Uh, so again, you don't get an incumbent that sits on it for ever. It's designs and specs. So this is really important. This is what it's all about. Um, there's new specs coming out all the time. This is Barrel I from I, uh, Rackspace and IBM. It's an open power design server. Uh, one of the really interesting things from my point of view is that this one actually has all the front ports on a daughter card. So you could actually redesign the front panel of this server to be what you want it to be. Perhaps a very powerful open flow switch. 
Uh, all the firmware of this was actually developed uh, here in Australia, in Canberra, with the IBM team there. Uh, we believe that this is still the only server which the, with an open source uh, BMC on it. Uh, but it's not just servers. Uh, this is a benchtop power supply unit, so you can test out the servers. Uh, when we first got our, fir our, our first kit, I went down and bought a benchtop power supply from JCAR and hardwired that into the server so I could turn it on, because we didn't have the rack yet. Um, but now you can actually do in a much cleaner and marginally safer way. Uh, we're also getting specs from other people, like uh, this is the Microsoft's Open Cloud Server. This is what Azure runs on. So this, uh, Microsoft have said that this has cut their deployment times by 50% by using this stuff. Um, HPE makes blades available for this thing. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of companies are getting into this kind of stuff. Uh, Microsoft has also released Project Olympus, which is a bucket load of specs, um, huge number of specs on all the components of the servers. Its involvement, the whole different ways of getting involved. Um, I think the slide deck will get made available somehow. So, yeah, if you want to get involved, there's a bunch of different good ways. So. Australia and New Zealand, there are people doing open compute stuff down here. Uh, Telstra has some racks. They're doing a lot of stuff in open networking. A bunch of universities are using the, the OCP network switches. Uh, Rackspace is using it here. Uh, large gaming sites, Catalyst. And I've been talking to a bunch of people over the last couple of weeks who are looking at doing some pretty serious OCP deployments. So it's quite cool. Why OCP for, for uh, Catalyst? We love open source. Uh, we believe strongly in open source software. We're an open source development company. Uh, we work on it. We contribute it. We live it. Why not the hardware? It's always been a pain point for us. So it's just natural use open source hardware. We also have a Catalyst Cloud. Um, so OCP is great for cloud stu scale stuff. Um, we tell people that they should treat their virtual machines as cattle. Why not the servers as well? So. This is one of the nice things about it. There's a picture of one of the servers that we have. Um, you can see the 12, there are 12 volt bus bars at the back of the rack, there's three of them. The latest designs have one bus bar, but you can still, you, you can pick and choose what you want to do. Um, see all the green bits here? It's all tallest, thumb screws. Uh, you can use a screwdriver if you, if you insist, but you don't have to. Um, it is quite nice to work on. But we're actually here to talk about networking, right? So. Um, those are some of the, uh, those are Penguin Computing uh, switches that we've got. They're running Cumulus Networks, um, operating system on them, Cumulus Linux. Um, quite nice. This is also one of the power shelves that uh, takes three phase, two three phase feeds into it. Uh, it's N plus N redundant. Quite nice. Um, so the nice thing about these switches here is they're actually running off 12 volt power. Uh, they were possibly the first 12 volt switches that uh, Penguin Computing sold. They had they had they had to get some of the the hand make the cables for us because uh, they were they prototyping them and they said, "Oh, good, really like that." And they said, "Well, we'd like to sell them to you." So um, it's now it's now actually a production option. So quite cool. So open networking is all about white box switches. You know, let's give you choice. You know, you can have your choice of operating system on. You can go with either open source, mostly open source. Um, because some, there is usually on some of those there's uh, some daemons for talking to the actual ASICs that have got NDAs around them, so they can't open source those yet. Um, you can go with the completely proprietary options. Um, all of these operating systems have got different feature sets. Some of them support OpenFlow, some of them don't. Some of them support BXLAN, others don't, MLAG, all that kind of stuff. So you've got to, to look at what you want to see what, what the matchup is. Um, and one of the nice things about this is we're, we're hearing people now talking about, you know, uh, this is something that Brad touched on as well, and Philip, was people tre saying treat the networks as, as servers. You know, we're using automation tools for doing this. You can run health monitoring directly on your switches. So you no, you no longer have your big monitoring server off in one corner of your network that's, that's going down and pulling everything using SNMP. You can actually run the stuff on your switches and feed stuff back in. So that's quite nice. Um, usually, they're running Debian, and you just app install things that you want to have, or you have 
Perl, Python, Ruby, Go, whatever you want to have, you can write that on your switch. Uh, and we're also seeing a lot more that people are talking about testing the entire switching fabric in virtual machines. So a lot of these uh, operating systems for the switches now, you can get uh, virtual machine images and just spin them up quite trivially. Uh, Cumulus Networks has some quite nice stuff around that. And uh, yeah, push on green with uh, continual integration and deployment. So you can de devolve a lot of power and deploy stuff that you know that's going to work. Um, just because you're using open networking switches doesn't mean you have to be slow. You can get uh, switches that are doing 100 gig. Uh, Manlox has got a 200 gig switch that's coming soon, hopefully. Um, they've already got NICs out there for doing that. So lots of options there. So there's some options of, you know, some pictures of some of the hardware. So the Edge Core one is the one that's in the top right-hand corner. Um, that's a copper switch, but there's the fiber ones outside. Um, Interestingly enough, the bottom right-hand one is the uh, backpack chassis switch out of Facebook, which has eight 100 gig switches in it. Interestingly enough, they're all independent switches. That it's not a chassis switch, you don't configure them as one entity, because the whole point is use Ansible to drive the configuration. So you no longer care that you're not using a chassis switch that's one entity. In fact, you have benefits from the fact that they're discrete switches, because you can't have one person make a mistake and take out the entire switching fabric. Uh, so it's eight 100 gig switches and there's basically another switch fabric behind it that's acting as a clause switch fabric inside there. So it's spine and leaf in a chassis. Quite nifty. Uh, and now we're also getting um, open networking access points. So each core has released a specification for the APs. Uh, it still runs only so you can deploy your own you know, your operating system onto there. I expect it won't be too long till we get OpenFlow enabled operating system on that. So, quite cool. And a lot of this comes out of the um, uh, being able to run ONI, which is the open network installer environment. Um, so this came out of Cumulus Networks, which is now an official open compute project. project. Uh, it's been worked on by a number of people. Um, a, Number of, all those switches I showed just before support this. There's a bunch more that are supporting it. And basically it's a glorified pixie boot environment, right? So you can deploy configurations, you can do um, AB operating systems, all that kind of stuff. So quite nice. Um, and this is just a sample of some of the operating systems out there that you can run on these switches. Now, not all of them support all the hardware. You do have to check and make sure that the, you know, that the compatible, but a lot of them are using the switch abstraction uh, interface stuff to make it easier to port them. Uh, and again, varying feature sets, uh, feature sets, do your homework. Um, we're using uh, Cumulus Linux on mo most of our switches at the moment. Uh, we, quite, you know, we quite like that. Uh, it's quite some quite nice manual interface stuff going on. Sadly, it doesn't do open flow, which makes us a little bit sad. We've, we've got over that. Um, so there are some issues for Australia and New Zealand around using this open compute project hardware. Uh, we've got issues around the scale. We're quite small, you know. The, a lot of the people when, you, when I was talking to them were talking about doing, um, <laughs> well the, the integrators are used to dealing with 100 plus racks deployments at a time. So. Initially, I was struggling to get people to return my emails when I first started asking, hey, look, can I get some of this hardware, please? Uh, this is around the server side of stuff. This is changing. Um, we're getting a lot more people talking to us about doing that kind of stuff. Open networking is a lot easier because most of the distributors will just sell you a switch or two at a time running this stuff, so it's, that's not too bad. Um, so as far as getting the server stuff, hyperscalers in Australia, they sell it. Silicon Systems is in New Zealand, that, that's my integrator, that's who I use, uh, they'll sell here. And there are a number of companies that will now sell directly into this market. So that's, this is quite good, it's, things have changed since I first started looking into it. Uh, one of the things, because there is support, you've got to make sure that there's uh, processes in place for doing that. We had some initial hardware uh, issues with our PowerShell. It took a little while to get that sorted out, but now that we've 
we've gone through that pain, the support channel is now in place. So, if you want to do your own, own deployment of own compute gear, um, if you're doing a greenfield data center, it's really easy because there's a bunch of designs out there for doing this kind of stuff. Uh, you can start, you can allow for the open racks from day one, which, you know, they're two and a half meters tall when you have wheels on the bottom of them, so they're pretty, pretty big. Um, and ideally, you'd plan for having, uh, you know, four three-phase circuits to each rack, or we'd be doing 48 volt power, however you want to do that. Uh, the nice thing is that one of the open compute uh, data center designs is basically getting rid of centralized UPS and putting lithium ion batteries into the power shelves. So you don't have to worry about UPSs anymore, uh, which is kind of nice. But you can also do stuff with existing data centers. So you know, there might be things you can do to improve stuff. Um, open Compute does have 19 inch servers. Uh, interestingly enough, all of the open networking switches are 19 inch. So you can just go by a switch and it'll work. Uh, a lot of data centers I've looked at, I've gone around a lot of data centers in New Zealand. Most of them, maybe half of them, will be able to fit an open rack without any issues. Other ones you can't, but you can get half height racks, which is still, you can still get quite a good density into those ones. Uh, so I'm actually considering putting some half height racks into one of the data centers which I'm using because, yeah, I can't fit big ones in. Um, I've also since found a supplier that will ship the, the racks flat pack, which is a lot nicer when you're doing international shipping than having to get an empty, uh, entire rack empty. Uh, if you're dealing with some of the integrators, they'll actually fully rack all the servers and pre-cable and install everything into your rack and then ship the rack like that. Uh, it's nice if you can afford the money to do that kind of deployment. Um, oh, one thing to check is, as well is um, how wide the racks actually are. So uh, the rack we've got is 605 millimeters wide. Um, yeah, we allowed 600 mil. Yeah, we had to move some racks around and make that fit. Uh, a little bit painful. Uh, you can also start off with, might need to change batteries on this. Uh, a really good way to get started with open computer stuff is open networking. You know, this is where a lot of people are starting off doing it. Uh, there are, I know that there's already universities around Australia that are using uh, open networking switches, uh, be it uh, Edgecore, Matanox, Penguin Computing, or a bunch of others. Uh, so this is a really good play way to get start, just dip your toes into it and start doing stuff. Um, so think about the supply chain. Make sure that there's parts available for things that you're dealing with. Uh, there's, you know, community support is starting, is starting to develop. So um, what we've done is at the start of this year, we uh, went live with the uh, uh, Australian New Zealand Regional Committee for the Open Compute Project. Um, it's been it's launched, it's been very quiet so far. There is a mailing list for it. Um, there's only been a few emails go across it yet, uh, but we've, we're working on getting that built up and you know, as more people get interested in this stuff, we hope to start being able to do more stuff around uh, building a community and making sure that people have got the support they need and able to talk to the right people. Uh, so I've, I've been doing that over the last few weeks, going around and talking to people about what OCP is, how it would fit in with their business, um, reassuring them that there is, you know, that they're not the, the, the only ones in this region that are looking at this stuff, that there are other people. So it's been quite cool. And then, that's me. <laughs> <laughs>